In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading, I am the Good Shepherd, comes immediately after Jesus has controversially cured a blind man. The religious authorities and the Pharisees are so upset by this startling miracle that they question both the blind man and his parents intensively, but to no avail. The blind man, despite being blind from birth and only newly cured, nevertheless sees who Jesus is much more clearly than the religious experts. How extraordinary, he exclaims. Here is a man who has opened my eyes, and yet you do not know where he comes from. How dare you lecture us, respond the Pharisees, outraged by the cheek of the man. They turn to Jesus for answers, only to have him tick them off. For their spiritual blindness. You claim to see clearly, he tells them, but you don't see what is right in front of your very noses. Before they can recover from this attack, Jesus begins to explain who he is, in an image drawn from everyday life, from the humble world of first century Judean farming. It is the true, the good shepherd, who leads the sheep into the sheepfold, he tells them. He enters by the door because he is the shepherd and the sheep follow him because they know and recognise his voice. But the accusing group of Pharisees don't seem to get the point. As John puts it, this was a parable that Jesus told them, but they did not understand what he meant by it. Like every good teacher, Jesus heaves a sigh and repeats what he has said with some variations in the hope that they will understand him better this second time. I am the gate of the sheepfold. Anyone who comes into the fold will be saved and will find pasture. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Have the Pharisees got the point now? Well, probably not, because Jesus now repeats himself for the third time. I am the good shepherd, he says. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He does not run away as the hired shepherd does when wolves come prowling round the sheepfold. I know my sheep, continues Jesus, and my sheep know me. But, he adds, there are other sheep and these too will follow his lead and listen to his voice. In this passage, Jesus daringly tells this group of Pharisees that he will become the saviour of not only the Jewish people, but of the Gentiles too, of all the peoples of the world. His listeners are divided. Some are impressed by the authority of his teaching and his miraculous healing of the blind man. Others are convinced that he is out of his mind. This group of Pharisees is confronted with a difficult question which is also a choice. Who is Jesus? This is the dilemma, or rather trilemma, which C.S. Lewis once described as the question of whether Jesus is mad or bad, a crazy man or a massive fraudster, or God. As Christians, we have already declared our belief that Jesus is God. But we too have some questions to consider, some choices to make. We know who Jesus is. The question is, who are we? What sort of sheep are we as we try to follow the Good Shepherd and to hear and obey his voice? Now, as you know, all know, I think, I used to teach Victorian studies and particularly the history of art. So when I began thinking about this well-known Bible passage, what came to mind immediately were Victorian pictures of sheep. Believe me, there are a lot of them. So I want to explore this question, what sort of sheep are we, through the medium of Victorian sheep paintings. So what sort of sheep am I? What sort of sheep are you? Are we, for instance, summer sheep? Here is Summer in the Highlands by the Scottish artist Joseph Farquharson. Doesn't it look idyllic? 
In the words of the old Porgy and Bess song, summertime and the living is easy. We have our flock, friends and family around us, plenty to eat and drink, all that grass and the water of the lock. We have the shelter from the trees if the sun gets a little hot. There are no threats in sight, no wolves, no dark clouds. There's no shepherd in sight either, but then perhaps we don't really need one at the moment. We can make our way quite nicely, thank you, along that broad, easy road to the left of the image. Summer sheep is us. When life is going well and we are quite happy and satisfied, we turn up at church on Sunday, but really that is about as much as we feel we need to do to follow the Good Shepherd. We are doing pretty well by ourselves, it seems. I think that we have all been summer sheep at times. I certainly have. But then it is quite possible that we might become strayed sheep. Here is William Holman Hunt's strayed sheep. You can see that it's still summer and the weather is still good and the grass abundant. But there are some warning signs here of what happens when we stray away from our good shepherd. The sun is low, evening is coming and we are far from home. Additionally, we are at the edge of some cliffs and some of us have already fallen over into some bramble bushes. They may look pretty and flowery, but they are full of weeds and thorns. Some of us are tired and worn out in need of refreshment, so we are lying down exhausted on the ground. Is this you, perhaps, after the pressures of lockdown? And see how we are all pointed in different directions. No one knows quite where we go from here. Where is the path back to the fold where we can shelter and rest for the night? Now we are beginning to want a shepherd to come and find us. But it may be that we have already become sorry sheep. Here in William Holman Hunt's The Hireling Shepherd, we see what happens when we follow the wrong shepherd, when we listen to the wrong voices. Perhaps those wrong voices promise us comfort, fun, acceptance, wealth, importance or security. But take a look at our hireling shepherd. He really won't look after us at all. He is far too busy flirting with his girlfriend to pay attention to our welfare. We should have been eating grass, but because he is otherwise engaged, we have got into a cornfield and have been eating grain, which makes our tummies swell most painfully. Farmers call this being blown, and certainly we sorry sheep have really blown it. No wonder some of us are lying on the ground groaning. And we are not taking good care of our young either. Look at that lamb sitting on the girl's lap, eating sour apples. You don't need to know about the Garden of Eden to get the idea that this is not a good spiritual diet for a youngster. So we are finding out that it is not enough just to follow a shepherd, any shepherd. We need to be a bit more discerning than that. We need to be following the good shepherd who really cares for us and makes sure that we eat in green pastures. It's not enough to have a direction or purpose in life we need to be going in the right direction to have the right purpose so that we walk the way of the abundant life which Christ has promised us. If we don't seek the good, the true shepherd, soon we might even become struggling sheep. The snowbound sheep you can see in this winter scene from Joseph Farquharson. For Quarson loved a scene of sheep in snowy landscapes, so much so that his fellow artists nicknamed him Frozen Mutton. In this image, we are wandering about in a wintry landscape, gradually losing sight of the rest of the flock and looking vainly at the icy ground, wondering where our grass has gone. 
Perhaps things are not going so well in our lives. We are struggling with difficult relationships or lost jobs, with illness and loneliness, with increasing age. The climate has quite literally changed and we are in danger of becoming frozen mutton. We need our good shepherd desperately, but we have lost sight of him. Where is he? In the last of our images, William Dice's The Good Shepherd, we find the saved sheep. Saved sheep follow the voice of the Good Shepherd, who is leading them into the shelter of a safe sheepfold, which is also a lovely field of pasture. Saved sheep follow close on the heels of their shepherd, and the shepherd tenderly carries the weak and the tired in his arms. In the distance, we can see a blasted tree with a trough below it, a reminder that the Good Shepherd has died in order to bring us the living waters of salvation. He has laid down his life for his sheep. Saved sheep are the strayed, the struggling and the sorry sheep whom the Good Shepherd has pursued tirelessly with his love and rescued out of danger with his shepherd's crook. But most importantly, they are also smart sheep, the sort of sheep which northern farmers call hefted. Smart sheep have learnt what it is safe to eat, which paths are safe to follow, how it is best to live under the guidance of the Good Shepherd. And they pass this knowledge on to others, leading them into the sheepfold of God. Are we saved sheep, but also smart sheep? Are we the sort of sheep that God has created us to be? Have we allowed Christ not only to rescue us, but also to shape us in God's image, as we listen to and follow his voice? And are we ready and able to share the wisdom of the flock, our knowledge of God's loving grace and care for us, with the lost sheep in our lives and our world? Let's pray together. Loving Lord, sometimes we are summer sheep who neglect you when our lives are easy and comfortable. Sometimes we are strayed sheep who wander far from your voice and fall into danger. Sometimes we are sorry sheep who seek the wrong things and pursue the wrong goals in life. Sometimes we are struggling sheep overcome by the troubles and difficulties around us, feeling lost and far from you. But you are the Good Shepherd, who always comes to find and rescue us and to lift us up in your loving arms. Through your Spirit, make us the smart sheep of your pasture, who hear and follow your voice always and draw others into your flock. Amen.